Entitled neighbor demands I move out of my own house and calls the police. Her son wants my property and she gets arrested. Subscribe to Ripe on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. I am really losing hope that one day the Karens of the world will all wake up and realize that they are the only main characters in their own story. Since that does not seem to be happening ever, I get to share with you my interaction with a Karen who basically wanted my house. My wife and I recently moved into a new home after living in an apartment and saving for years. She was actually pregnant at the time of the story, so we were stressed out getting the baby room ready and making sure everything was working out. We live in an area that has a couple of colleges not too far away. I think a bus like two blocks away from me goes right to one of them. So, as you can imagine, a handful of homes around here are either rented out by a bunch of upper-class men not wanting to live on campus, or people renting out a room in their home to make a little extra money. Our home is on the smaller side and with our family growing, we have zero interest in dealing with a college kid. They find postings online and so the first few months we were living there, it went fine. Then one day I got a knock on my door from a kid that honestly did not even look old enough to be going to college. Me, can I help you? Kid, yeah, I go to college and I wanna live here. Me, I'm sorry, I think you may have the wrong house. We never posted anything about renting out. Kid, yeah, but this is a small house, so it's probably cheap enough for me, no problem. I don't know what this kid was thinking because as any adult right now knows, even the smallest house in a semi-decent neighborhood is expensive. So I repeated myself to the kid that we were not renting and closed the door. My wife and I had a good laugh about it and thought maybe he was getting hazed by being forced to do that or playing some kind of practical joke and had a hidden camera. We are easygoing people and he was just a kid after all, so as long as he left I really did not care. Then a day later another knock came around dinner time, so I ignored it to eat. The knocking did not stop though, so I told my wife to sit and I would handle it. Standing at the door was the same kid but now with a woman that looked like a typical Karen. I internally groaned knowing this was going to be annoying. Me, can I help you ma'am? Karen, yes, my son came here yesterday and wanted your property. But you just had him go away without even listening. Me, I listened to what he said. If he wants to find a place to rent, he will have to look online for postings. Karen, this is unacceptable. My boy is going to be starting at college in a couple of months and needs a place to live. Me, that really is not my problem. Most freshmen live in dorms anyway. Karen, dorms? I don't expect my son to be exposed to a horrible cramped lifestyle like those poor kids. He deserves to live in a house and this is the one that he likes. Me, we don't have a room for rent. I don't know how else I can explain this to you. Karen, a room? You clearly don't understand what we are trying to explain to you. I would not allow him to live with such a rude stranger. You will give him the entire house. I honestly thought she was joking, but she actually wanted us to give her son our house and for us to go and move out. It went back and forth for a while before I told her that she was crazy and slammed the door in her face. For anybody curious, she was offering like $200 a month to give her son the entire house. She did not get off my property though and instead kept knocking and yelling through the door. My wife was getting very upset at this point and the doctor said that she could not be stressed so I sent her to our bedroom and told her to close the door and put on headphones. I would take care of Karen. Before I could even go and yell at her again for round two, I saw police sirens outside of my house and officers started banging on my door. Karen looked so smug and it turns out she called the police on me for being in my own house. She started crying and saying how her son owned the house and was gone for just a few months. Then the nasty squatters, aka my wife and I, came and refused to leave. The police started to arrest me and go looking for my wife, but I managed to talk over Karen to tell them that I owned the house and had the paperwork to prove it. Karen started yelling that it was a fake and I told them they could see the paperwork and confirm it with the town that we had bought the house five months ago. 
They agreed to hold off on the arrest until they saw the papers and made some calls. Karen was angry and telling them that they had to arrest us because her son had to move back into his house. Then the police asked the son where his papers were and he could only look up at his mother. He did not even know what a deed was, let alone had one for this house. The police told us that it all seemed in order, that I did own my house and property. Meanwhile, the police turned their attention onto Karen, who was angry and now saying that her son deserved the house because he had to get to school and we could always just move somewhere else because we did not need the house anyway. It turns out us being squatters was not the only thing she said on the phone to the police. She talked about being physically assaulted by me and that I punched her in the face. Even though there was clearly no evidence, the police seemed very annoyed at this lady and told her that it was against the law to call the police for a fake emergency and lie to them about somebody doing an illegal activity. When you call about an assault and squatters, even an ambulance shows up as well as a ton of police that could have been doing better things. The last I saw of Karen, she was being put into handcuffs and shoved into the back of the police car, all the while yelling at her son to get the names and badges of the officers because she was going to sue all of them. Then they drove away and we got some peace and quiet. My wife took a while to calm down after all the excitement and a couple months later we welcomed our baby boy into the world without any problems. Nobody's son is going to be living in my house except for my own. And yeah guys, I don't even know where to begin with in this story. Making false police reports is just the worst thing ever, especially because you are wasting resources which could be used for actual emergencies. Either way, let's continue with the stories. The next one is titled, The best revenge is a life well lived. When I was in my younger years, I managed a children's after school project which was actually pretty fun except for one issue. We had one kid there who could be problematic and lash out physically at others. One day he did just that to me and I have training regarding restraint procedures. I had to restrain for about 10 seconds, nothing harmful or anything, exactly how we were trained to do it. I informed his stepdad when he came to collect him and explained everything that had happened. Explained the anger and his lashing out and kicking me and showed him the bruises on my legs. The following day I get a visit from the head of the council department I worked for. A complaint has been made. The police have been informed and I've been suspended from all four jobs I worked with the local authority, including childcare and youth work and I had just left the residential social work side of my work. It turns out that this kid's mom had just qualified as a social worker and had started pulling all of the strings that she could with her new colleagues. She tried to get me arrested and charged with assault. That went nowhere as there was no case to answer and the police interviewed me and later informed me that they could not even believe it had been brought to them in the first place. But where it gets crazy is that there was literally a witch hunt started. Lies were told within the council by this woman backed up by friends in the same department. A sham internal investigation was carried out, the management committee of the after school project I managed was directly threatened with being blackballed themselves. This included the site manager of the school, a police office and other people who worked with children in some form. They panicked and decided to let me go but they wrote and told me of the threats made to them. The council's investigation then relied heavily of this dismissal as reason enough to terminate me from all my other roles. What they failed to realize was that I had been collecting everything I could. People I knew within the council passed me copies of emails and I had nearly 8 years service with them and I qualified for legal help to sue them for the dismissal. So that is exactly what I did and they did not even want it to go as far as a tribunal because their case was non-existent and relied on assumptions and unprovable rumors spread by their own staff. Let's just say that I had to sign an NDA and could not talk about it for 10 years and I had a not so insignificant payout. So now comes the petty revenge part, 4 years ago I ran into this kid. 
Now a full-grown adult in his early 20s, I was stood behind him in the supermarket and he eventually recognized me and started to say something snotty to his friend about me. I leaned forward and said, tell your mom I said thanks, if not the lies and BS she tried to pull, I would have never had, insert large sum of money here, to buy my house with it. It paid 60% of it up front and could not have done it without you guys. I then gave him a wink and smiled. The look on his face was priceless. He literally started to turn purple and his friend kept asking him, what lies did you tell to get him that kind of payout? In the end, he dumped his shopping basket and stormed off. I moved one place closer to the checkout with the biggest grin on my face you have ever seen. And yeah guys, indeed, the best revenge is simply a life well lived. In my opinion, that's also one of the most satisfying ways of revenge you can get. The next one is titled Office Revenge. Do you guys also have this one person in the office that everyone dislikes? Well, I do. He follows rules to the letter and takes joy from being incredibly petty. He rubs everybody the wrong way, his kids are adults now, but he still books off the kids' holidays before anyone else gets the chance, so people who actually have children cannot take it. He complains when some people book a few days off before and after Christmas, as you are meant to do one or the other, but then he will do it himself. Lately, he has really been rubbing me the wrong way. If something of yours is 5mm over the line and onto his desk, he will push it back onto your desk or knock it over. The apprentice had a bottle of water like this the other day and Jobsworth threw it in the bin. We are hot desking and are also supposed to clear all items from desks at the end of the day and not reserve them. This rule is aimed at those who come in twice a week on a rotor, like him, but I come in every day. As I come in every day, I see no harm in being at the same one permanently. My boss sees no issue with this, but the job's worth took it higher and has kicked off in management meetings, etc. So, my boss apologized to me and said I have to clear the desk at the end of every day and he will send out a mass email saying so. The Jobsworth has also complained about people wearing jeans as this is not professional, so this was included in the mass email. Although it said that jeans were smart slash casual and fine to wear as long as there were no rips or anything. So this is where the petty revenge comes in. The Jobsworth likes to wear shorts, he also wears flat peak slash fitted hats and a leopard print face mask. I then clicked reply to all to the email and responded something along the lines of Regarding workplace attire, I assume that flat peaks, leopard masks and shorts are also inappropriate. It does not look very professional to clients and I assume that this was the reason, company name, provided us with our own branded masks, right? And the boss has agreed with me and said only our branded masks or the blue surgical masks can be worn, no shorts and no unsuitable hats. Jobsworth has then called the boss in a rage and has demanded that I apologize for this personal attack on him and is apparently kicking off and trying to take it to the union. It's a very small win, but I am loving how angry it has made him. And yeah guys, sometimes petty revenge is all you need to get back at someone and you can certainly make someone's life hell with it. The next one is titled Hotel Restrooms. A few years ago, a young lady who was wearing a very short skirt, low-cut top and looked worse for wear, came into the front lobby shortly after midnight. She walked to the center of the carpeted room and proceeded to squat down and pull her panties aside to relieve herself. I am the front desk manager and was covering the audit due to a callout. I said, hey, how's it going? She said, fine, as she continued to urinate. She then asked how my night was going and I said, well, it just got really interesting. I asked if she needed a restroom and she said no, she would be alright where she was. Unfortunately, I had to contact the police and they arrived pretty quickly. She was extremely intoxicated and my only option apparently was to have her arrested for indecent exposure and disorderly conduct. I work for a Lambton Inn in Maryland and that arrest would mean that she would be placed on the sex offender registry in our state 
Because that is how the law works. I asked the officer if I could decline to press charges now, get her identification and gave her return in a day or two to pay for the carpet cleaning, since she did not have dollars at the moment. He said I could do that because none of us wanted to destroy this woman's life because she peed on the carpet while clearly not realizing what she was doing. So that is the route we took. I photocopied her ID and gave her a note to hang on to reminding her what she had done and that she needed to bring dollars to the hotel by a certain date or unfortunately the charges would get filed. A few days later I was on my normal shift when an extremely beautiful woman walked in inquiring about how to handle the incident that occurred the other night. I explained that the young lady needed to come back and handle it as agreed upon. She very embarrassingly looked up at me and said, I'm the young lady. I was blown away. I mean, holy. What a difference a shower and not running makeup made for her. She was very embarrassed as I recounted the story for her and actually started to tear up as she got dollars from her purse. She gave me $100 for the carpet cleaning and said not that it matters I know but I brought this to prove to you that I'm not that kind of person and I'm really sorry. She proceeded to hand me a note from the local hospital with attached lab work that showed she had tested positive for raw hypnol, roughies and apparently her and two of her friends were dosed at a bar in town and her one friend was SA while the other friend wound up in the drunk tank and we all know where this young lady ended up. I immediately apologized for having had her come back with money and explained I would not be taking any money from her at all. I was so upset to find out that these three young women came to our town to have a good time and it turned out so awful. I ended up giving her and her friends a discounted rate for a few days since they had to stay for the investigation into the SA and anything they needed going forward I did my best to redeem our town by giving them. Long story short, what I thought were just drunken shenanigans turned out to be someone's worst night. Calling the police was a godsend because they were able to identify that she had also been dosed. Anyway, that's my funny slash sad story. Her and I still communicate till this day and I see her when she comes into town. For anyone that is inquisitive, she has ever since and still does use her regular restroom when she visits. The next one is titled, am I really the douchebag for this? So I live in a small apartment complex, my nearest neighbors are a group of college students. Nothing wrong with that, I don't know them well but we are always polite to each other. This problem has only arisen recently. For some reason, this group and some additional friends have decided to start hanging out in the hallway outside of my apartment. Literally just hanging out and talking things they could do in their own space. I work from home and this has been a nightmare in meetings. I can hear them in the hallway as can my co-workers. They are college kids so some of their discussion is not exactly office appropriate. Nothing wrong with that, I'm not a prude, it's just not workplace talk. Yesterday I got especially fed up after they were especially loud during an important meeting with my supervisor. I went into the hallway and just politely asked them if they could please hang out somewhere else. I explained my WFH situation and told them I could hear them. They took it poorly, they started telling me that they live here too and can hang out wherever they want in the building. One of the friends, not a resident, called me a BITCH and told me to soundproof better. One of them implied that WFH is not a real job which is rich considering that none of them work during summers. Their parents foot the bill. I feel like I was justified but surprisingly my mom agreed with the neighbors. She insists that they live there too and have a right to the hallway. So am I the a-hole? I'm at my wits end. And a user in the comments said, not the a-hole, they paid rent to the house, not the hallway. The hallway is a common location that is used by everyone in an apartment building and people need to be courteous and not disturb others. I would contact the landlord if I were you. And yeah guys, let me know in the comments what you think about this story. Do you think that OP is the a-hole or not? Either way, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again tomorrow.